Good morning, everyone. My name is David Frazier, and I have the privilege of serving as Associate Dean for the graduate programs in the Tippy College of Business. And I, I think that was pomp and circumstance and circumstance and circumstance. And <laughs> not sure how many times we made it through that. <laughs> We're glad we got everyone in. And on behalf of the faculty and staff of the Henry B. Tippy College of Business, I welcome our soon-to-be graduates, their families, friends, and significant others to our 2019 spring commencement. This event celebrates the great achievements of graduates from all of our Iowa MBA programs. These programs include the full-time MBA, the professional MBA with locations in Cedar Rapids, Des Moines, and the Quad Cities, the executive MBA with locations in Iowa City and Des Moines, the Hong Kong MBA, and the Chimba Italy MBA. And this is actually my first of three monthly graduations. A month from today, I'll be in Hong Kong to celebrate with them. And two months from today, our Italy program students will be here as they finish up their coursework and will celebrate their graduation. So the diversity of our programs is a strength that allows us to reach and touch many stakeholders, particularly in this period of persistent global change. In this regard, we offer one MBA program, the University of Iowa Master of Business Administration, across all of these locations. As you could see from the flags that were displayed earlier, representing the countries of origin of our new graduates, the Iowa MBA truly is an international program. And it is great to have family and friends from around the world, along with our family, our, our faculty and staff, to acknowledge the accomplishments of this year's graduates. The Iowa MBA is a family of programs, united by a common vision and value proposition, dedicated to producing managers and leaders with the ability to compete in the global marketplace. Our graduates have developed functional expertise, built teamwork and leadership skills, and solidified ethical foundations that will enable them to enrich the organizations that they serve, the global business community, and society at large. At this point, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce my colleagues on the platform and I'll ask them to please stand as they are introduced. Sarah Fisher Gardiel, Henry B. Tippy, Dean and Professor of Marketing. Melissa Shivers, Vice President for Student Life, the University of Iowa. Chris DeWolf, co-owner, president and CEO of Lil Drug Stores, our keynote speaker for today. Jennifer Blackhurst, professor and faculty director of the MBA Business Analytics Career Academy, and I might mention representing the recently renamed Business Analytics Department, reflecting our increasing emphasis on the high demand skills in business analytics. Amy Colbert, professor and management of, sorry, professor and management and entrepreneurship department executive officer. And Amy's department was also just renamed to include the entrepreneurship part as the Tippy College is ex increasingly emphasizing entrepreneurship. Thomas Gruca, professor and faculty director, MBA Marketing Career Academy. Amrita Nain, associate professor and faculty director of the MBA Finance Career Academy. Mark Penno, professor accounting. John Solo, professor and economics department executive officer. Thank you. And now the staff representatives of the MBA programs. David Dyack, assistant dean of the full-time MBA and specialty master's programs. Colleen Downey, assistant dean, academics and enrollment, professional and online MBA programs. Christine Ahrens, 
Business Director of the Business Analytics Academy, Jan Fassi, Business Director, Marketing a Career Academy and Director, Online MBA Program. Chelsea Hillman, Director of the Quad Cities Professional MBA Program. And I have to, I, I'm gonna embarrass Chelsea because yesterday was her birthday and I told her we were gonna throw this awesome party for her today. <laughs> so here you are, folks. Michelle Pontarelli, Director of the Cedar Rapids Professional MBA Program. Nicole Vogt, Interim Senior Director, Student Experience, Professional and Online MBA Programs. I would li now like to introduce Dean Sarah Gardiel for remarks and further introductions. Dean Gardiel. Good morning, welcome everyone. Anyone who pays attention to literature, books, movies, knows that epic journeys for heroes often begin with a disruption. And certainly disruptions have been a part of what has evolved and moved forward business programs for decades. One might say that the Industrial Revolution begat the business school which later evolved into the MBA in the early 60s. But if you think about the time in the last century since then with the cultural revolution, the digital computing tech evolution, uh, there, there have been continued disruptions that have brought new people into the marketplace, new ways of making decisions in the marketplace, and MBAs have had to evolve with those, including for us starting with the full-time program and then adding part-time and MBA, EMBAs, uh, uh, global MBAs, soon to be online MBAs. When so much is changing, and we are a college of business and we're paying a lot of attention to those changes, I think an important question is what stays the same? Does everything change? And I will tell you that for the Tippy College of Business, and for decades before any of us got here, what hasn't changed is our values. What hasn't changed is our commitment to creating a transformative experience for our students who come to us at whatever point in their lives and their careers that they need education. I think that's a, a great place to ground who we are. And, and while what we do, how we do it, how we deliver programs continues to evolve and change that commitment to excellence and transformational experiences is the base note that never goes away in the music that we're creating. Two years ago, and I'm speaking specifically to the full-time MBA students at this point, you and I started off your time here with a significant disruption. I remember very clearly standing in front of you all in the Pomerantz Center and announcing that you would be the last class that we would ever have in the Tippy College of a full-time residential MBA program. And it was a very disrupting moment for everyone in the room, not just the students, but for the faculty and staff who had nurtured and loved and grown and supported that program for decades, a program that we loved and that we took a great deal of pride in. And what I remember saying to you that day was a commitment, a recommitment of that promise to excellence and a transformative experience and that even though you would be the last graduating class of the full-time program, you would miss nothing along the way in terms of resources, in terms of our best faculty and their attention, in terms of the opportunities that we were gonna create for you along the way. And so for all of you, but especially for the full-time students, I believe that we're here to celebrate a promise that's been fulfilled by our faculty to that transcendent, excellent experience. That was the commitment that we made to you. 
You also made commitments at that time to your families about where you were going and how you were going to get there. And I think most importantly, when all of you started your programs in whatever form, you made a commitment to yourself. You made a commitment to yourself to be here, to be present, to learn, to grow, to arm yourself with the knowledge, skills, values that would serve you well as you move into a disruptive environment. We planned our programs specifically so that you leave us with technical skills, with soft skills, and yes, with, with those core values that we think will help lead you through those times. As alums, you are going to be joining a, a very strong tradition of the MBA, the Tippy MBA. Uh, the full-time students, I don't know if some of you know this, have a, a t-shirt now that reads, uh, you can't get in. <laughs> I, I love it. Um, but the Iowa MBA, even though it's not continuing forward in that particular form, continues forward with strength. We are only growing our MBA presence in Iowa City, in Iowa, literally around the world. And as we go online fully in the fall, everywhere, total access to the Iowa MBA. So our commitment is still strong. What we, what we had to let go of was form, but what we have never let go of is the grounding value of excellence and transformation. For all of you, I want to say that you th might think that your epic journey, which is going to continue at this point, is about to, to start without us. No, no. We're, we're in this together. And what I want to assure you is that we will move forward with our alums. Tippy College of Business has an extraordinary symbiotic relationship with our alums all over the world who work with us and our students and our programs to hire, to look over our shoulder, to help us stay excellent. And that responsibility now falls on you. Our expectation is that this is not the end of our relationship, but only the beginning. Congratulations to all of you. Not done. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to, well, now I'm lost. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Krista Wolf who has been already introduced as the co-owner, president, and CEO of Little Drug Company. This is a consumer products and retail solutions company um, and co-owner also of Fourfold Ventures, a family office focused on private investments and philanthropy. Previously, he held positions at General Electric, including corporate finance, acquisition and business development roles in GE Healthcare, and currently, he also chairs, uh, serves as the chair of the Board of Trustees for Mercy Care Services Corp., the parent corporation of Mercy Cedar Rapids Hospitals and Clinics. He's also a member of advisory boards for U.S. Bank and Swinetech, a technology company focused on eliminating sow and piglet deaths, which actually was birthed on our campus by one of our undergraduate students. He's an investor and board member of 2001 Development Corp. Chris helps lead this private economic development corporation focused on advancing the Cedar Rapids area. Among Chris's past accomplishments are his service as chairman of the board of directors of the Consumer Healthcare Products Association, a national trade association representing leading manufacturers and marketers of over-the-counter medicines and nutritional supplements. He's also chairman of the CHPA Education Foundation, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the responsible use of over-the-counter medications and nutritional supplements. 
chapter chairman of the Young Presidents Organization, a global networking and professional development society, chairman of the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation, a public charitable foundation established by individuals, families, and nonprofit agencies and businesses to benefit Lynn County, and chairman of the Board of Trustees for Junior Achievement in Eastern Iowa. Chris's family is joining us here today. His wife Susie was honored as Junior Achievement of Eastern Iowa's Young Entrepreneur in 2011, and in 2013 the couple was honored by the Association of Fundraising Professionals as Outstanding Individual Philanthropist of the Year. Chris holds his BA from the University of Iowa and his MBA from the Kellogg Graduate School of Management at Northwestern. Chris and Susie's three children are joining us here today, Riley, Lindsay, and Weston. With all that is on Chris's plate, I'm amazed that we could get him on our calendar today to be here today. I will tell you that Chris and Susie, I think as a team, are leading some of the most progressive and uh, admirable organizations in this part of our area of the state. Uh, they are at the forefront of what we want to be talking with our students about in terms of how to create an organization that is aligned with the future. It's my pleasure to introduce Chris DeWolf. got a little stress there <laughs> when you went down. Good morning. Happy graduation day. It is really exciting to join you today to celebrate this important milestone. There's obviously a lot going on. Before we begin, I would like to ask the graduates to take a moment to reflect on your journey here to identify a person or persons who was instrumental in helping you to achieve this accomplishment. Find that person in your mind's eye and relive for a moment how they helped you and commit to saying thank you to that person later today. Let them know how grateful you are for their support and just as they helped you, commit to helping others as you go forward through your career and through your life. As Dean Gardiel said, my name is Chris DeWolf. I am co-owner and CEO of a great Iowa-based business called Little Drugstore Products. And I've been honored, I'm honored to share some thoughts with you today. So just briefly about why I'm here. Well, I think it's because I went to school here. <laughs> because I absolutely love this university. And because the Iowa-based business that I am proud to run has given me a clear sense of who Iowans are and what Iowans are capable of achieving. So even if you're all not from Iowa, which you're not, today you are an Iowan, and a bit of Iowa is always going to be with you. Graduating today are 191 students. 149 of you come from our state. 42 of you come from other states or countries but you knew that you wanted your MBA to be from here. You may not realize it yet, but trust me, you will, that this place has become part of you. Someday, someplace far from here, you are going to see a person wearing that familiar black and gold Tiger Hawk logo, and what are you gonna say? Go Hawks! You know, I do this all the time. I do it in the corners of the world with my kids over here, and it drives them absolutely crazy. Guess what? They're going to say it right back to you. And it's not going to be as much of a gesture of a support for a team as it is a connection with something greater, right? With people you've never even met. I think of this connection as the code of Iowa. At a time when the principle of community seems strained in so many ways, we could all use a bit more Iowa, I think. I'm guessing that when most of you enrolled in this program, you were thinking about your careers. You were thinking about how you would advance in your careers, you would earn more, and you would even you know, achieve your dreams through this MBA. When I earned my MBA, that's exactly what 
I was thinking. My thinking has evolved a lot since then. From believing that success in business was about my career, my status, my dollars, my title, if you will, to believing that success in business was about making a difference. In the year 2000, my wife was over here in pink, thank you, I can see you, and I, Susie and I returned to Iowa to join her family's business. The business was founded 25 years earlier by my in-laws, Dennis and Donna Oldorf. The couple pioneered the concept of on-the-go health and beauty care. You know, their idea was pretty straightforward. They wanted to serve consumers at the time and place of their need. They began by purchasing sample packets of over-the-counter medicines, and they stapled these packets to ye yellow cardboard displays. They then drove around the United States. They crisscrossed the United States and sold these displays out of the back of their car for 10 bucks a piece. Eventually, their products were everywhere. By the year 2000, they grew their dream into a $20 million a year business, a far cry from the company's humble beginnings. But by that same year, the business had pretty much stopped growing. And in fact, it was showing signs of decline. We knew we had to change its course. I don't know if it was instinct, wisdom, or just sheer necessity, but it became obvious that we had to start thinking differently, reflecting on our whole reason for being in business, which we reimagined as making a difference. The results that followed were truly inspiring. Soon, despite our name, we weren't so little anymore. Instead, from right here in Iowa, we grew our business to serve consumers in roughly 30 countries around the globe. And you could find our brands in 190,000 retail locations in the U.S. alone. Because we shifted our focus away from ourselves, we actually became more successful. And as a company, we developed a culture that even the most admired companies would envy. Today, 97% of our employees say they are proud to work for our company. 95% say they are confident in our future. And 92% of our employees say they would recommend our company as a great place to work. People often ask me, Chris, how in the world did you achieve those types of engagement scores? Well, you know, on one hand, it wasn't easy. It took a steadfast commitment and several years of meticulous work. On the other hand, the good news, it was easy. And it all centered on the philosophy of putting the needs of others first. And you will find that this philosophy not only builds an amazing culture, it also comes in handy when it comes to growing your business. Over the past 18 years, we have grown routinely by acquiring other companies. Frequently, we are told that we win the deal not because, excuse me, frequently we are told we win the deal not because we are willing to pay the most, but because of our fair approach. While others adopt a take it or leave it attitude, we seek constructive solutions. While others nickel and dime the purchase price, we look for ways for sellers to participate in the upside. And while others look to sever relationships with inventors, you know, we recognize it's often about legacy and thus find ways for the sellers to stay connected after the sale. This approach to deal making is not revolutionary, but it does require a constructive mindset and a belief that it is okay for both parties to win in a negotiation. Hopefully what I'm getting at is clear. Make it about the people, whether they are your customers, your employees, or people you're making deals with. And always strive to make a difference. I guarantee if you keep these as your focus, everything else in your career and life will follow. The reason I am proud to say that we are now approaching 400 million in sales is not so much that we did it, it is how and why we did it. By the way, you don't need to have a finance MBA to realize that's a heck of a return, right? 
Profits matter, but, not, but only if they allow our business to be a catalyst to make a difference. That's why we wake up motivated each and every day. In my experience, building your career or building your business and giving back are not mutually exclusive. They are harmonious. The commitment to making a difference through volunteerism, philanthropy, mentoring, investing in early stage businesses, placing customers and your employees first, and prioritizing family has been the fuel that has propelled our success. Today, our company provides support to community causes by donating financially, but just as importantly, through leadership. By leading campaigns, serving on boards, and providing thought leadership around the table. Our company is supporting about 30 organizations right now, touching on issues ranging from dementia care, hospice care, the arts, programming for at-risk kids, affordable housing, and some very interesting initiatives right here at the university. Everyone at our company is encouraged to give back in some way, however they can. Importantly, you will find there is a ripple effect created by this approach. Encouraging your team to engage in the community around them results in happier, healthier, more fulfilled, and frankly, more connected employees. And here is an additional benefit for you to latch onto. It makes it so much easier to attract and retain great talent. We have built an amazing business, honestly success beyond our wildest dreams. We have done so by leading with the philosophy I just described. Make no mistake, our company is incredibly competitive and results oriented. But we have a greater purpose that fuels us. So now I get to give you my secret formula, if you will. If I reflect on our career in building this business, six key takeaways that I hope you take with you and share. One, create a culture that is about more than sales and profits. We measure results constantly, but it is an equal partner to other values. From personal experience, I can tell you that when you're hitting home runs, it's easy to focus only on the numbers. But when you strike out, which will happen, you will be grateful that your culture stands for more, as it will be these other values that pull you through. Two, hire great people and get the heck out of their way. If we were in private, I'd probably use a different term than heck. <laughs> you hire them for a reason. Let them shine. The sooner you get comfortable with the fact that you don't have to be the smartest, most talented person in the room, the sooner your career is going to take off. Honestly, it took me a while to figure this one out and, and to embrace this. I figured that as an owner and the CEO, I had to have all the answers. I didn't. What I needed to do was pick people who did. Three, understand your true assets. What makes your organization truly unique and work it like crazy? In our case, it was access to a unique retail channel. Once we identified this and we organized around it, we experienced an avalanche of growth opportunities. Four. Never be afraid to invest in your future, of your business, your employees, of your community. The first strategic decision we made upon returning to Iowa was to acquire a new business. As I shared, this was risky. We were at a delicate crossroads. That being said, we knew the acquisition had the potential to both financially and symbolically pave the way for the future. Five, this is my favorite. Share the financial success with everyone at your company, not just the usual suspects. I am proud to say that every employee of our business has the potential to earn more based on company results. 
you will find that this approach creates a unique bond as the team works to achieve a common goal. And six, double hand, you can make a difference. You know, giving back is a lifelong journey. Find your passion. Don't wait for others to step up and realize how much more fun and impactful it is to start now, in big ways and small ones, instead of waiting until late in your career. To return to the Code of Iowa for a moment, I describe it as valuing character, holding yourself to the highest standards, and expressing care and compassion as you connect with the world around you. You know, whether you're a Hawkeye fan for life or not, I want you to take that code with you. You have had more than an academic experience here at Iowa. You have had a direct view into an approach that will serve you well in your life. Before I wrap up, I understand that today's graduation marks the end of the full-time MBA program. For those of you graduating from this program, take the fact that you were a member of the final program as a great source of pride. You overcame disappointment, and you came out the other side stronger, wiser, and frankly, better equipped as leader, leaders. And to the faculty of the full-time program, and to the program at large, thank you for your commitment to providing a world-class education to these graduates. In speaking with members of the graduating class, it is evident that the faculty gave it their all to ensure that the final years, as they call themselves, received an exceptional experience. Honestly, when Dean Guardio approached me regarding the speech, I was a bit reluctant. After all, it's not my natural style to drive down to Iowa City and get on a podium and seek the spotlight. But I knew there was an important message that I could share with each and every one of you at the end of this wonderful program. Find your greater purpose and do good as much as you do well. Thank you and congratulations. Will the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration please rise? Dr. Shivers, these candidates having completed all of the requirements of the degree Master of Business Administration are recommended to you by the faculty of the Henry B. Tippey College of Business for the conferring of this degree. On recommendation of the faculty of the Henry B. Tippey College of Business and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, State of Iowa, I confer on each of you the degree, Master of Business Administration, as qualified and designated. Graduates will now be introduced individually by David Dyack. As our, gra as our graduates are introduced today, you will notice that some are wearing gold co cords on their robes. These cords identify those graduates whose high level of academic achievement in the MBA program has earned the distinction of graduating with distinction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the Tippy College of Business MBA class of 2019. Family and friends, your applause and cheers are encouraged. This is a great time for celebration.
Ariane Alagach. Alagach. Dakota Allen. Bruce Ammerman. Iman Anis. Murali Anna Vajuli. Christopher Artman. Mahi Lakshmi Ashwas. Kaylee Ayers. Daniel Bab. Ellen Badger. Courtney Baker. Emery Patrice Bangi. Harold Benson. Britta Bergstrom. Beth Alice Bolly Randall. Megan Blackburn. Kimberly Borman. William Borseth. Alyssa Borst. Joseph Boswell. Kieran Bow. Don Brathwaite. Matt Brummond. Jonathan Bunger. Matt Bazinski. Kirsten Carew. Nikki Kavan. Nathan Childress. Ryan Crystal. Jilna Kloss. Caroline Cleveland. Aaron Coleman. Eric Thomas Conlon. Neil Dalal. Kyle Davies. Nicole Ray Davis. Amy Lynn Day.
Brenda Dodge. Lauren Marie Derzinski. Catherine Dorajic. Trevor Dursky. Michael Bruce Edmond. Alan Engelhart. Joshua Entler. Katherine Fisher. Kimberly Nadine Floss. Carrie Firk. Sachit Garg. Michael Sean Garten. Christina Gewicki. Hannah Geyer. Chiratan Ghosh. Anthony Gianelli. Sarah Gluck. Kurt Graff. Krista Grange. Kevin Greening. Greg Hall. Namit Honda. Sarah Hansen Garib. Corey Thomas Haralt. Reed Harris. Dana Healy Nogelmeyer. Eric Heininger. Randall Helm. Christian Hemholz. Kelly Henderson. Paul Henning. Marcella Hernandez. Caitlin Herndon. Audrey Ann Morris Hersbeck.
Erica Hill. Sambit Hota. Levi Howes. Sean Humes. Christopher Hunter. Eric Hines. Philip Ayano. William Adawi. Alicia Jacobson. Angela Jiskut. Laura Judge. Raghu Kuluri. Donald Kamara. David Caney. Jeremy Stephen Cowton. Logan Kellogg. Murley Mohan Katla. Diana Kozlova. Hari Kuragala. Subodhi Kulkarni. Matthew Kurtzman. Jonathan Lamb. Kimberly Lammers. Marianne Lane. Jessica Lansing. David Lipon. Luke Leonard. Catherine Ann Lindemann. Shannon Luchterhand. Kayla Rose Lynch. Caitlin McDonald. Taryn Mandava. Shrivani Mani. Jade Monternak.
Jonathan Mazurik. Melissa McConnell. Caitlin McCormick. Nicole Foss McCormick. Patrick McFadden. Ali McFarland. Thomas McGee. Kain Myat Nu Yang McGowan. Sean Meany. Imran Miman. Gilbert Mensa. Anna Michelson. Kaylin Moore. Janelle Louise Morio. Rachel Pearl Morris. Muhammad Mustafa. Marugan Nambiar. Debbie Nakua Teti. Matthew Obina Wani Ayi. Mark Odegaard. Nimisha Pachori. Adam Palmer. Ryan Parker. Manas Avinash Pawar. Melissa Pepper. Isabel Perez. DJ Piscini. Binod Pacarol. Andrea Polanco. Alex Potter. Catherine Powers. Samuel Pritchard. Sean Ravenscraft. Sundar Reddy. J. 
James Regeniter. Quinlan Riser. Elizabeth Rodal. Lindsay Rolfs. Heather Roman. Angela Ann Ross. Austin Rounds. Denise Rusk. Samantha Samish. Brad Sander. Jenny Shizzle. Bethany Schneider. Elizabeth Schrum. Aaron Scaboni. Lily Shang. Archit Sharma. Tiyasvi Sharma. Matthew Shaddock. Corey Schultz. Ashley Sill. Kaylin Simic Chapik. Jordan Simpson. Ankur Singh. Clayton Craig Solberg. Chakrati Sumalagarji. Ashley Sorensen. Jess Sorensen. Michael Sorensen. William Kingsley Spencer III. Brian Sporer. Elizabeth Sporer. Erica St. John. John Stack. Ryan Steele. John Steffen. Sherry Steuben. Hayward Stowe the third.
Timothy Strazo. Contessa Lynch Sutton. Eduardo Zamaripia. Pradeep Tanpuri. Cindy Wee. Whitney Toomey. Caitlin Trundle. Greg Tolls. Mitchell Uben. Michael Ulrey. If Yanni Hugo. Suresh Volachami. Vani Venkat Kachal Lapathi. James Weekly. Austin Weaver. Stephen Welling. Morgan Wentland. Michael Wilkinson. Cody Wilkinson. Lucas Winsman. Emily Workus. Nicholas Woodley. Jason Woodworth. Daniel Yeager. Chelsea Young. Timothy Wuchter. Benjamin Zelly. Jason Craig Zaustra. going to give the last of our graduates a couple of minutes to cycle in from getting their picture taken off stage. But there are several things that I would like to cover before I do that. Number one, we all know what tomorrow is, or if you haven't remembered, credit me for reminding you, but it's Mother's Day, right? Okay. <laughs> So I want to recognize our hardworking mothers among our faculty and staff. Ladies, would you please rise if you're a mother? <laughs> and
And then incredibly, and I'm not sure how you do it, ladies, but a lot of our MBA students are mothers too. Would all of our MBA mothers please stand? And all of the mothers in the supporting cast, please stand so we can give you a round. Now I want to say thank you to my staff who plays such a critical role in pulling off this particular event. And you've seen them all over the building today. And there was a lot of background work. Some of you have been communicating with Mindy. Mindy, I'm going <laughs> to embarrass you and ask you to stand as well. Mindy's my. <laughs> Mindy is my administrative assistant, and she's in charge of this whole show. So a lot of responsibility. Thank you, Mindy, for pulling that off. And she has two little kids, a one-year-old and a three-year-old at home, too. Okay, So she has her hands totally full. And I want to call out, and I, I'm, I'm not going to get all of the students who have just remarkable stories. But one of the remarkable stories is just distance involved in this program. Lily, where are you? Maybe she's still, all right, Lil, Lily joined, there she is, okay, Lily, okay, Lily is one of our Hong Kong students, okay, but, <laughs> Lily came over to spend the final semester with us, and then we had several remarkable stories in our executive MBA program, and I'll, I'll tell you, the most remarkable one in a minute, but we had a couple of our EMBAs who got transferred while they were in the program. And help me out, EMBAs, Florida and what, Seattle? Okay, Florida and Seattle were commuting in. But I want to particularly call out Tim. Where are you, Tim? Okay, Tim's over here, okay? I talked to Tim last week at the EMBA banquet. Tim lives in Baltimore. And as of last Friday, Tim had put on 178,200 and change miles to do the Iowa Executive MBA program. And, and coming back to Chris's comment about wanting to be a Hawkeye, I asked Tim last week, I said, Tim, why did you do that? He said, I wanted to be a Hawkeye. Yeah. All right, now you're a Hawkeye, Tim. <laughs> Would all the graduates please rise? Audience, let the, let's give them a round of applause for one more time. Okay, graduates, please be seated. I would like to offer my heartfelt congratulations to all of you, the MBA class of 2019, and welcome you to the ranks of Iowa MBA alumni. From Iowa throughout North America to Asia and across continental Europe, Africa and Latin America, our alumni are making a difference in the world of business and society at large. As you go forward along the paths followed by so many TIPI alumni, remember what you have learned and experienced here at TIPI and use your knowledge with integrity. Samuel Johnson, 
the 18th century English poet, essayist, and moralist said, integrity without knowledge is weak and useless, and knowledge without integrity is dangerous and dreadful. Now, billionaire Warren Buffett, who most of us probably know, chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway, has lived by a set of awe-inspiring values and principles that has led to tremendous success. So whenever he imparts his wisdom, you want to tune in. All right, Inc. Magazine reported a couple of years ago that Warren Buffett has remarked, somebody once said that in looking for people to hire, you look for three qualities, integrity, intelligence, and energy. And if you don't have the first, the other two will kill you. You think about it, it's true. If you hire somebody without integrity, you really want them to be dumb and lazy. Think about it. Okay, so graduates, in all you do, in your please, you know, employ personal and professional integrity and make us and yourselves proud in that humble Iowa way. Despite the uncertainty that surrounds us in this time of economic, political, and technological upheaval, many exciting opportunities are open to you. I, be, I have no doubt that all of you will achieve great success in your chosen careers. Remember that wherever you choose to go, the resources of the Tippy College are still behind you. And I would also ask you to keep your contact information current so we can stay in touch with you, stay in touch with us. So again, we are very proud to welcome you to the MBA alumni family. I would like once again to thank our speaker, Chris DeWolf, for his inspiring comments. Chris, will you please join me at the podium? Thank you. And Mindy is about to bring over a little token of our appreciation. I think somebody asked Chris what he wanted in appreciation for speaking, he said a t-shirt. So he got that in a little bit more. <laughs> okay. As you leave today, we ask that the audience please remain seated while our graduates exit. Thank you all for attending and celebrating with us today. We will have a dessert reception just outside of the doors since the weather didn't cooperate to have it out on the terrace. So again, thank you all for coming. Graduates, great job. Congratulations. Keep in touch. Thank you.